I've already covered Muji and Uniqlo, and now it's time to cover its copycat sibling, Miniso. If you're from the Philippines or in Southeast Asia, Miniso is not hard to find. Miniso is known for its wide range of affordable and oftentimes cute products. I had nothing against Miniso, but that's until when I was doing my research for Muji and Uniqlo. And the issue of Miniso being a copycat brand, it kept popping up. And that's when I realized how similar Miniso's logo is to Uniqlo's logo. I tweeted a side-by-side -side comparison of this on Twitter and the similarities are just too obvious. And I had no idea that Miniso is actually known as a controversial Chinese retailer. And that's because Miniso is apparently quite notorious for pretending to be a Japanese company, even though it's not. But then I asked myself, why did I ever assume that Miniso is a Japanese brand? And that's when I realized that I wasn't actually being presumptuous because Miniso claimed itself that it was a Japanese designer brand. And do you know why they claim that they're a Japanese designer brand? That's because technically, Miniso is a brand owned by a Japanese designer. So <laughs> that's why they call themselves a Japanese designer brand. And apparently, Miniso only has four stores in Tokyo. And that's because Miniso isn't doing so well in Japan. Obviously, because Japanese people call them on their BS and know that they're not authentic. But then Miniso, they had to put those stores up just so that they can support their claim of being a Japanese company. But come on guys, anyone with half a brain knows that Miniso is only using this to change the way people perceive their brand. And I have to admit that as I was working on this episode, I came in ready to just go full on hate mode on Miniso. But then later on, you'll realize that it's not so bad. Because other brands, brands we like, have been doing it as well. But just not at the level that Miniso is at. And it all started in 2013 when Miniso opened their first store in China. Miniso was founded by Chinese entrepreneur Ye Guofu and allegedly a Japanese designer, Miyaki Jr. I have a big feeling that I pronounce both of these incorrectly, so just forgive me. Only four years after their launch, Miniso was pulling in over $1.2 billion in revenue, though only a small percentage of this is profit because it's a low-margin business they're in. Miniso's story is actually not that interesting, but what's interesting and what we can learn from the most is its strategy when it comes to branding, marketing, and operations. The idea of Miniso was clearly modeled from Daiso, the Japanese brand. I mean, if it wasn't too obvious, the brand name itself was a clear giveaway. Daiso is a Japanese discount store that has been around since 1977. So if the US has dollar stores, Japan has 100 yen shops. Daiso is perhaps the most popular of these Japanese discount stores. But here's the thing. There's still a bit of unsaid tension between China and Japan. And that's maybe because Japan did some pretty horrific things to the Chinese during World War II, like the infamous Rape of Nanking, just to name one. So there's that unsaid resentment between the two populations. But then at the same time, there is a special allure towards Japanese products. Chinese still perceived products from Japanese brands as high quality. So now, we combine all these elements and you find yourself in a glorious opportunity. What if you use Daiso's business model because it works, then you use Japanese looking aesthetics and branding because the perception of Japanese brands are influential, and you do all this under a Chinese company so that you can win in the very market that Daiso is having trouble winning in, China. And the result is Miniso. And Miniso is incredibly successful in China. Miniso is said to be using a strategy that they call as the 3 high, 3 low strategy. 3 high refers to high efficiency, high technology, and high quality. And the 3 low refers to low price, low cost, and low margin. Let's talk about the branding. As I mentioned earlier, Miniso's logo looks suspiciously similar to Uniqlo's logo. And that's not the only thing they copied. Because if you happen to visit a Miniso store, even the look of the store is very similar. There are bright lights, white painted walls, and when you slap the Uniqlo logo copy on there, I swear, from afar, you would actually think that it's a Uniqlo store. And all of this was intentional. Uniqlo have built with it a brand that people perceive as representative of what a Japanese brand should look like. And so what Miniso did, instead of reinventing the wheel, Miniso just straight up copied Uniqlo. 
to be fair to Miniso, I think that they deserve the hate for outright copying Uniqlo, but I don't think that they deserve the hate for embracing a brand identity that covers up that they're a Chinese company. Because I have to admit that if their branding made it clear that it's a Chinese brand, I would immediately perceive it as either fake, low quality, or I'll just feel like I'm going to get scammed. Which is kinda weird though, right? Because Personally, I know that 97% of everything we use now is probably made in China. Yet it doesn't really concern me as long as there's a non-Chinese brand on the product. But as soon as you put a Chinese brand there, I'm definitely going to avoid that brand. And that's why I don't completely blame Miniso for embracing Japanese branding. It increases the customer's confidence in their products and it allows them to build an international brand, which is exactly what they were able to do. But speaking of copying, another brand that Miniso has been copying from is Muji. I've talked about Muji in a separate episode, so check that one out. Muji is a Japanese brand that has built a cult-like following with its diverse range of high-quality products from pens, notebooks, clothing, storage containers, Muji has it all. And it has blossomed because of its minimalist aesthetic and reputation for being beautifully designed and of high quality. But now, let's discuss the difference between Uniqlo and Muji and Miniso. It's pretty much established that Uniqlo and Muji have high quality products. The difference is, both Uniqlo and Muji have much longer production times, and so they cost more. Both Uniqlo and Muji spend time designing and managing the production of their products. And of course, it has to cost more and it does take longer. On the other hand, Miniso's products are all private labeled. In a nutshell, private labeling is just slapping a logo on a product that a factory can readily produce. So Miniso doesn't have to worry about designing something new. A lot of entrepreneurs actually do this, where they simply visit Alibaba.com, contact a supplier, order 10,000 watches that look like Daniel Wellington watches, then they ask that supplier to print their logo on it. And then boom, now you have a watch brand. This entire process is basically what private labeling is, and that's pretty much what Miniso does. Since Miniso plays no part in the designing and production of the product, they don't have to spend on molds and product designers. And so, as a result, Miniso has a faster production time, and they spend nothing on product development. The best part is, it's actually part of their marketing strategy. Because Miniso refreshes their inventory regularly. A lot of Miniso's items are incredibly cheap, so there's a lot of impulse buying happening when you visit their shop. Miniso knows this, and so to get you to visit their shop often, they shuffle their inventory. And then they add new items regularly, which they can do quickly because of private labeling. And then boom, people keep wanting to visit a Miniso store because of the possibility that they might find something new, and they feel like they have to buy it because of the uncertainty that that product may not be available the next time they visit. With all these elements at play, Miniso has created a killer combination. By imitating the brand of Uniqlo, they painted this picture that they are a trustworthy Japanese brand with high quality products. And along with this, they get to sell cheap products that are easy and fast to produce. They've basically taken all the generic products that's available via Alibaba and Taobao, organized them, slapped their logo, and all under a brand that pretends to be Japanese, simply because Japanese brands are trusted globally. This model works exceptionally well in developing countries. And here in the Philippines, I don't go to Miniso often, but every time I do, I feel a bit excited to see what worthless crap I can find that I don't probably need. Like, the last thing I purchased from Miniso was this mini container that kind of organizes your vitamins. And when I was at the store, it really did feel like I really really need this item. And since it's really cheap, I just went ahead and bought it. Fast forward to a few months and I have never used that container. But then I don't feel that bad because it was extremely cheap. And that's the magic of Miniso. But then the downside of being a copycat and not actually putting any effort in building a brand is that you're gonna get copied as well. Because a brand is more than just a logo. So you can copy the store design and logo of Uniqlo and the products of Muji, but there's something about actually buying from Muji that buying from Miniso just can't take away. And Miniso's whole strategy of copying other brands has inspired others to copy Miniso. And oh god, you guys should see the copycats of Miniso. It's just funny to see copycats being copied by other copycats because at this point, all the rules of engagement are pretty much thrown out the window. 
Like, nobody cares about trademarks and copyrights anymore. The ones I'm talking about are Uniso, Ubiso, and Shimi Value. These guys are also using the same red logo of Miniso, and they're all using the same Uniqlo store interiors as well. There are two others that are not as bad, because even though they follow the same model of pretending to be from Japan, this one is from Malaysia called Domsky, and at least it had the decency to change its logo color from red to blue. One other brand that's been gaining some ground here in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia is Mumuso. Mumuso's theme is green, and this one is notorious for selling blatant copies of original products from other brands. And when I say copy, I mean same packaging, same sticker label design, but with Mumuso's logo instead of the famous skincare brands I'm sure you're familiar with. Mumuso is focused on their skincare products, and so since people trust South Korean brands for skincare products, Mumuso is basically a Chinese brand pretending to be a South Korean brand. Maybe I'll cover them on another episode. But basically, they've embraced the business model of Miniso, and so are the others. In 2018, Miniso had revenues of up to $2.5 billion. We hate them for being copycats, but I'm sure they're laughing their way to the bank. Hate them or not, there are lessons to be learned from the story of Miniso. And so that's about it guys, now you know about the brand origin story of Miniso. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. We have more episodes on our podcast, just search for Brand Origins on any podcast app. This episode is made possible by Ask Zeus. For only $99, they'll give you honest and actionable feedback for your brand. Until the next episode, this is Chris Garin.